Welcome everybody to HBK. Hello everybody, welcome back to HPK. Great to have you with us again as always. Nice to be out of the house. We pray while you with us, you learn to love God and to live for God. And we always ask, we love it. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all that we're doing. We are into our new theme, Upcycle. Roll with what you got. And for the whole of this theme, we're sort of focusing all around the idea of something called contentment, which means learning to be okay with what you have. Because we all feel that temptation to just want more and more and more things and new things and different things and more exciting things, which is not a bad thing. However, we do need sometimes just to be learn to be content with the things that we have. And in fact, today we're going to think about the idea that wanting more and more can make you miserable, which means I like, really sad or feel a bit rubbish. And we're going to unpack that idea by thinking about a story from the Bible. We're going to look at our memory verse again and then leave you with a question to think and ponder about for the rest of the week. We hope that sounds okay. Let's jump straight into our Bible idea. Hi everyone. I've got a story from the Bible again today that shows us what contentment doesn't look like. And we should pay attention because it's a story that shows us what happens when we don't learn to be content with what we have. This story takes place after the story of King David and King Solomon ruled the land. And there was many other kings that came after them. And one of those kings was called King Ahab. Here he is. Now, King Ahab was one of the kings of Israel who didn't really listen to what God asked him to do. He just thought about himself, what he wanted to do. He didn't really care about what anybody else wanted. And nobody really said no to him, even his wife Jezebel. Here she is. Now, one day, King Ahab wanted to set up a vineyard, which is a place where people grow grapes. And uh, King Ahab decided, oh, I want that one over there, which belonged to a man named Nabot. Here he is. And the king told Nabot, I want to have your vineyard to use as my vegetable garden. It must be mine. And the king, in fairness to him, said, I'll give you lots of money for it, or I'll give you even a better one that you can just have all to yourself. The Nabot said, No, I don't want those things. You see, this land has been in Nabot's family for a long, long time. So it's like his, almost like his family's home. It's land that belongs to him and his family and the family who've gone before him. And he wants to keep it so his children and his children's children could use it as well. So the king went home very angry. He was so angry, he lay down in his bed and he refused to eat anything. And then the queen came in to see him. And she said, Why are you in such a bad mood all of a sudden? And Ahab told her about Nabot who wouldn't sell him the, the vineyard and they should get him all stroppy about it. So Je Jezebel came up with a horrible plan. She told Ahab what, she, what they should do to get the vineyard for him. Jezebel wrote some letters to the leaders in Nabot's town and said, host a big meal. She said, I want you to make up some lies and tell them in front of everybody all about Nabot and have him killed. Huh. And you know what? The leaders did exactly that. And poor old Nabot was killed. Can you believe that? Poor old Nabot hadn't done anything wrong. Just the king wanted his land and said he said no to him, which is fair enough, isn't it? And he was killed just because King Ahab had to have his vineyard. Oh dear. Listen to what happened next. It says in the Bible, and I'm going to read it. Jezebel heard that Nabot had been killed. As soon as she heard it, she said to Ahab, get up, take over the vineyard from Jezreel. It's the one he wouldn't sell you. It is, he isn't alive anymore. He's dead. Ahab heard that Nabot had died. So he got up, he went over to Nabot's vineyard, and he took it. There you go, Ahab. Sounds like you got what you wanted. Except that one of God's prophets, Elijah, was close by. God spoke to Elijah and gave him a message for the king. So Elijah went to find the king and told him what he'd done wrong. He said, what you have done is very wrong and horrible. And for once in his life, Ahab actually listened to somebody else. He listened to the message from God. He ripped his clothes and he put on really rough and itchy clothes because that's what the people did back then when they were really sad. So King Ahab and Jezebel had caused some real horrible trouble between the two of them all because Ahab wanted Naboth's vineyard. And things did not go well for the two of them in the end. They made themselves very miserable in their life. And this is really important for us to remember, is that wanting more and more and more can make you miserable. And that doesn't mean we can't want things or want things to be different than they actually are, but it can be a problem when we want too much of something or when we want more and more and more of things. And even if we get what we want, it doesn't feel like we've got enough. So let's pray and ask God to help us be content instead of wanting more and more and more. 
Dear God, we thank you so much for the story of King Ahab and Jezebel. It shows us how things can really go wrong when we forget to be content. Sometimes we feel like we want more and more and more, especially when we, we look at what other people have got. In those times, please show us how to be content and grateful for what we have and help us to trust you no matter what is going on. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So there you go, King Ahab really, really wanted Naboth's vineyard and he did whatever he wanted to get hold of it, which actually in the end worked out really badly for him and Jezebel and through some miserable things. The consequences of their actions were really rubbish. So we need to remember that our relationship with God is the most meaningful and fulfilling thing we can have. And if we forget about that and go after other things in life, we'll only end up feeling probably mostly miserable. Let's take a look at our memory verse for the month, which is something that Jesus said to a big crowd of people it comes from Luke chapter 12, it's verse 15, and it says, Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. Because I guess ultimately, we can't take it with us. Jesus knew that, and he always sought after what God wanted in his life. He talked about the kingdom of God, and that's what he always went after. So we learned in our story, you can have too much of a good thing. Have you ever done something you enjoyed so much that actually you start to feel a bit rubbish. Maybe you had too many sweets or you played too much video games, you watched too much TV and it started to make you feel a little bit groggy. Think about that, talk about that with those around you and think about how we can try and avoid that happening. How can we make sure that we're always after something positive and something that's going to be really good for us? Or how can we share that thing we love to make sure we include people in the things we have? We hope you've enjoyed joining us today. We have loved putting it on for you. As always, we would love to hear from you. You can get hold of us by all the information in the description of this video. And until next time, we pray you have a wonderful week, Super Sunday, and goodbye. He only thought of himself. He just thought about himself. Um.